too. So what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to talk about one of my favorite types of movies, and we're just going to call this the Sword Movie Podcast. All right? And uh, I guess first off, what we ought to talk about is what is a sword movie? All right? Now, I'll go ahead and tell you the five sword movies we're going to talk about today so you can kind of be processing this. We're going to talk about Ridley Scott's Kingdom of Heaven. We're going to talk about The Three Musketeers, Salkin's version of The Three Musketeers, directed by Richard Lester. We're going to talk about Rob Roy uh, from 1995, uh, set in Scotland. We're going to talk about The Thirteenth Warrior, uh, Michael Crichton's novel turned into a, a, a very good movie that everybody hated except me. And The Seven Samurai, the cl- most classic sword movie of all. We're going to talk about The Seven Samurai. So those are the five uh, of our, those are our top five sword movies that we're going to talk about today. And I'm not assigning these any particular order. I'll let you do that. But this is, uh, this is kind of, to get your mind working along the, the lines that, that ours are, um, these are our sword movies. John, what do you think a sword movie is? So, to me, a sword movie is it's going to have to have a degree of realistic fight scenes. Yes. Something you could see happening, even if they play it up. I was, I, I was helping an actor train one time, and, and I would say, uh, I wasn't hired to train him, but I was helping him with a particular thing. And he said, uh, he said it's got to look good on film. So... So keep that in mind. Whenever you watch one of these things, it's easy to get wrapped up in, yeah, but that would never work. Well, that's cute, but if it doesn't look good on film, nobody's going to care about it. Does that make sense? Right. We're not here to kill the other actor. No. We're, we're because here to, that's not what, <laughs> that's not that's what we do. Deal. We're here to make it look like we're going to kill the other actor without actually killing him because that's too damned expensive. So, so uh, the sword movies, like we, you and I grew up, you're not much older than me. We grew up when everybody had at least one pocket knife in their pocket. From the time, the earliest time you can remember walking around as a kid, you had sure. a knife in your pocket. Sure. And then at some point you graduated to a, a buck knife in that case, or it might have been a craftsman knife or something, that you wore that little case on your side, right? That folding knife mm-hmm. on your side, and then you had a pen knife. And then it, you might have changed from there. But so the, for when people talk about not allowing people to have a pocket knife, it's insanity to us. We don't know. I, we don't know anybody that doesn't carry a pocket knife. That's right? why I'm not going back to the UK. Right. I right. have no interest in being in a in a country that won't let me carry my fucking pocket knife. That's just that's just absurd. Sam, I might need yeah. to cut something. Yeah. A piece of cheese yeah. or something. You know. I, yeah. 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 So the sword movies to me, I like all different types of swords. I like looking at them. I like uh, you know, I've played around with them to a degree. So the sword has to be the, the, the weapon of choice of the guy, right? It has to be a priority weapon of choice. So right. when you look at the Seven Samurai, they had muskets, but you only saw the muskets a couple times. Yeah, there were three muskets in the movie. Yes, yeah, three. So, three. And you didn't, the and, primary, combat, primary combat was swordsmanship. And, swordsmanship. and, okay. and the, the muskets were incidental to the story, but central yeah. to the story in a sword movie, central to the conflict, as the conflict is engaged in in the movie, must be swords. Yep. So this means that a sword movie is essentially a period piece. Or uh, in the in the case of a movie like The Duelists, which is, a, in fact, Ridley Scott's first movie. Uh, th- this is set during uh, the Napoleonic Wars, and obviously there were firearms available, but the, the, the plot of that particular movie was these two guys had gotten crossways with each other and for 25 years they were fighting duels with swords so the right. duelists is a sword movie sword movie because the primary weapons involved in the conflict were swords now uh i've got some background in this i fenced for uh, about 20 years, I've actually been to a tournament and uh, entered Epe in uh, 
in tournament fighting. And uh, it's, uh, it's an interest of mine that I've had for all my life. I've got several very nice swords that I've accumulated over the years. This in front of me here is a is a nice sword. It's not an expensive sword. It's a World War II era uh, military issue uh, sword. I, it it looks like a katana, but technically it's not a katana because it, the blade is a is a single piece of steel, and it wasn't manufactured in the way a katana is manufactured. And uh, and so it's a it's a cheap copy of a of a katana, but it was made back in the 1930s and 40s, and was carried in World War II. It, it's an actual weapon. It is sharp, and this is the it stays by my bed, just because I like it there. And um, and you know I fenced for years. I'm too old and beat up and crippled now. I can't fence so. Uh, I, uh, but I still have my swords, and it's one uh, of the things. It's interesting from a, from a, you, when you look at something like fencing, you you can look at it from a from actual sword fighting perspective, or you can look at it also as as an art, right? It's, it's I mean, a it's, it's a art. sport in and of itself. It's it's not really, <laughs> yeah. Modern fencing in the Olympic sense is is not practiced as a martial art. Now, there are people who do fencing that practice it as a martial art. And, uh, There's some carryover ask, skills. There's some carryover skills. There, are some, but there is some overlap, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the closest to actual martial art fencing in, in modern sport fencing is F.A. And uh, there's three weapons. There's the foil, the F.A., and the saber. And uh, the foil is a highly structured stylized dance basically uh saber a little less so but the epa bears the most resemblance to actual fighting uh, it's a point weapon the foil is only a point weapon the saber uses the edge and the point and uh the uh but the epa is the is the is the closest to a uh to a, a sword fight that you can have in modern sport fencing. Now they have a they have a discipline called classical fencing that that is pursued by the hard headed guys that actually want fencing to be a martial art. And uh, last time I looked into that, there weren't a lot of people doing it. It's not a lot of people doing it, no. um, and you got to travel to do it, and then you got to find the right guys to do it with. Right. And it's it's just like any finding any other art where you got somebody where you got a potential to get hurt. Right. Finding the right people to train with is a pain in the ass. Oh yeah. Um, oh, the, yeah. Uh, you can get hurt in sport fencing. I know a friend of mine's dad fenced a long time ago, back in the nineteen forties, and he witnessed a guy get killed with a foil blade one time. That'd be uh, annoying. Foil blade broke. Uh in a thrust to the helmet, penetrated the uh, mesh, the heavy mesh on the helmet, huh? and uh, went into the guy's eye and killed him. Just killed him Damn. better than fuck. Right there in the on the peace day. There's a... Uh, it, was, there's, uh, it happened, there, you know? There's a TV show called Forged in Fire, and it's been on for about eight or nine seasons. And when these guys first started testing these blades that they would make, they would beat the shit out of stuff with them and the blades would break off and everything. And as the series has progressed, you could see that the padding and the equipment and the protection that they put around their throat and their wrists has increased as well, too. Well, that's intelligent. <laughs> you break a damn blade off beating on an anvil you can, or a bar part. And that, can happen, that can happen yeah. in the middle of a fight, and it has for yeah. since swords were invented. You know, swords have broken when you didn't want them to do that. So... Uh, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's it's an amazing thing. So, I bring a little bit of of that kind of experience to this discussion, and in in fact, that that discussion, that experience I've had influences my um, uh, choice of these of these five movies that we're going to talk about. 